So check this out. This is an eight track player with some never before seen features, at least not by me. It has got fast forward. It's got eject, it's got pause. How sweet is that? I'm sure it exists in other players, but I've never seen it before. So let's take a closer look. This is a realistic TR-801. Quick look at the back. You can see that it has a preamp out and aux in and an output level control. Got this at a record store. You know, they're looking for 30 bucks for it. it. Says needs work, only got working once. I was able to get it for about 20 bucks. True to the description, it's really not working. I don't have it hooked up to speakers, but um, you can hear the motor turning. The counter doesn't work, oh, which doesn't necessarily mean anything, but the view meters are also not working. Um, I also, you know, this is a silly thing to do, but I marked it with the, that black mark there, and it's not moving at all. When you hit program, it moves, but nothing else seems to happen, and fast forward, no change. So again, it does it in pause. So I'm gonna have to open this thing up, because at the moment it's not working. On the bottom side, there are screws like this to remove from here, here, What's nice is you don't have to remove any knobs, for now at least, and you can pull this whole thing straight out. As you put the A-track in, it's going to push this up, and you can actually hear it that it's going to make the motor go on. Tape being pushed in, and watch that switch go up and turn on. There must be a belt or something, so let's take a look underneath. Got this perched up on its side. You see this belt underneath, and when I put the tape in, I don't know if you can tell, but this is moving. This is not. So this belt is definitely loose and slipping, so I'm gonna have to replace that. So it looks like it's one, two screws there, and then one more right here. Take those three screws out, and the bracket does come out. And oh my gosh, what wonderfully easy access to that belt. This is the original belt. Try not to have it stretched, so it looks like it, the original belt is five and maybe seven eighths. In terms of how wide it is, three sixteenths of an inch. I found another belt. Um, so far, it's the closest one I have. So the replacement belt is coming in at just about five and a half, quarter inch wide, so we'll have to see what happens. So it's on there. I'm gonna put the tape in at this point just to see what happens, see if it spins. Oh, wow. So can you see that? So that is definitely moving. The question is, is that speed correct for the music? You know, is it making it move too fast? Is it making it move too slow? Time to test this thing out. Uh, it has to be hooked into a tuner or uh, whatever receiver, I should say. So I know it's moving, but will it actually play and will it sound right or will it be faster or slow? Let's see. Now, there we go. So let's try tracks, the different programs, I should say. So the view meters are working. The timer is not working. Let's see if pause works. Oh, it does, a little buzzy bit. So now the moment of truth, does the fast forward work? Mm, no. And the manual eject, is this thing gonna come flying at me? I don't know Glenn Miller that well, and there's no singing, so let's listen to some easy listening Black Sabbath. Right? Don't ask. I don't know the answer. I think that sounds right. So to my ear, that, that speed is good. That belt seems to be working. I guess I got lucky there. That was my first try. How often does that work? Pause is working. Fast forward is not working. I don't know what the hell manual eject is supposed to do, but it's not working and the timer's not working. And I didn't try recording yet. With the tape in there, this is engaging that rubber disc. This is turning. But, in there it's slipping, so I'm gonna replace the belt. This is the original belt, right around four and three quarters thickness. 
probably one, what, sixteenth, I think that is. So this may not be as simple as I thought. I assumed it was just the belt slipping on this pulley. I tried a couple of different belts, they didn't work, and then I started turning this. And at first it turns easy. You can see I put a black mark there, but in here you can already see it doesn't want to move anymore. And I can go backwards, I can kind of mess with it a little bit, and then I'll typically there's one, two, 12, and there it is stopping again. A little more proof that it's not the belt, that it's something about this thing getting stuck. So I've turned this to where it's loose, so it'll rotate 11 times, watch this, and then it will stop. So again, it's hard to count, but you can see it's probably turning, and there it goes, it gets stuck. And if I push it, another little bit, it's going again. So that's something in the in that counter box itself. When it stops, it rises up just a little bit. So it's risen up a little bit from that like blue box where the counter is. And so I thought, well, you know what? Maybe something's getting stuck in the gears. If I put this back to zero, maybe it'll turn, but it won't. And I guess I could take apart what I would assume is like the box with all the gears in it. That seems like a recipe for disaster. So what I found is that the pulley will go around 11 and a half times and then consistently get stuck. And then I have to turn it one and a half times until it gets unstuck. Add that up and you get 13, which just seems like an unlucky number. So it does point to something mechanical. I took that screw out, but I can't get this thing opened. There may well be more screws here, but that's attached to this whole bar. So that bar that has the uh, counter on it is connected to springs, which are connected to other things. It's not just a standalone plate. I am gonna probably leave it alone, but uh, I would like to take a look at the fast forward. So I didn't do anything, but it actually seemed like it fast forwarded and it actually did the manual eject. I'm gonna press manual eject. Oh my God, Freaking love that. That is so cool. So yeah, I fixed it, which means it fixed itself, it cured itself, because I don't do squat. Let's get another close-up of what's happening with that manual eject. Here goes. Ooh, so twirly, twirly, something, something, push. One more time from a slightly different angle. I love that. Right there is the fast forward, and I'm like, oh, these are electrical wires. I kind of traced them to where they were going, but I had no idea. Um, so I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to fix that. Somehow just thinking about it, must have fixed it. But of course the issue was, you know, I didn't really fix it obviously, and so how consistently will it stay fixed? Got that black Sabbath here, black uh, eight track back in, and I'm gonna try the fast forward and the manual eject. That's freaking awesome. And now manual eject. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> so really, I think the only thing wor uh, not working is the timer. And I guess I should try record though I'm scared. Check out this astonishingly cool, realistic uh, microphone. It's a good condenser microphone. It's got double jacks left and right. Got a homemade Rush uh, A-Track in there, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm on track two. I'm gonna press record. Oh my God, I cannot. I mean, this, it won't even budge. And I'm pressing pretty darn hard. I don't know why it doesn't want to record. I think I figured it out. I think you actually have to put the tape in while holding the record button. Because right now the record button will move. But what you see there is obviously a hook. If I put the tape in now, you're gonna see that hook. That hook right there comes over and I try to press it, it won't go. But now I'm holding the record button first and you can see that lever comes up and now when I press the tape in, it actually stays there. So I would think that will work to record. So now that I figured that out, I'm gonna hold the record button, press this in. And that turned a different color. I gotta turn the microphone on. Oh yeah, okay, so you won't be able to see it, but the view meter is definitely moving back and forth. Hello, this is testing. 
does this actually work? Turn the record level down a little bit. What's going to be interesting is, of course, I can't rewind. You can't rewind on 8-track. You might be able to fast forward. Fantastic option, but there's no rewind option. This is the song I recorded on. Let's see if it comes in here. I don't know exactly where I recorded. So the song just cut out. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so you won't be able to see it, but the view meter is definitely oh moving back Oh, my God. It recorded. Oh, this is testing. Does this actually work? Turn the record level down a little bit. Turning it down a little bit. Down to about two. Gonna turn it up to nine. Oh. Turning it up to nine. The left one is on now. So when I just did that, you could hear the speakers. It definitely uh, initially went up in the right speakers. I turned this one up. Then when I turned this one up, it went up in that speaker. So that's pretty cool. You can't rewind on a track. You might be able to fast forward. Fantastic option, but there's no rewind option. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that that actually works. So this thing, except for the counter, is really an excellent working condition. I, I just cannot believe it. Super excited. This might be a keeper. Why would I ever need to record on 8-track? I don't know. Maybe, you know, Armageddon comes and CDs and DVDs and iPods aren't working. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Sometimes it's just too cool. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing. And if not, at least a thumbs up. Remember, thumbs up never hurt nobody.